destruction of Ai Weiwei artwork a reckless and senseless act of vandalism. The destruction of an artwork by Ai Weiwei has been condemned as a reckless and senseless act of vandalism by the exhibition's curator. A 57-year-old Czech man was arrested after smashing to pieces a large blue and white porcelain cube at Bologna's Palazzo Fava Museum on Friday, local reports said. The exhibition's curator Arturo Galancino called it an act of vandalism made worse because some of the works on display explore the theme of destruction itself. The Chinese artist's depiction of conflict is a warning against the violence and injustice perpetrated by those in power and has nothing to do with this violent, potentially dangerous, reckless and senseless act, he added. Mr. Galancino described the suspect as an habitual troublemaker seeking attention by damaging artists, works, monuments and institutions. The Cube, part of the exhibition Who Am I?, was destroyed at an invitation-only event before the show opened to the public, as scheduled, on Saturday. Organizers removed the fragments, as the artist requested, and a life-sized print of the piece with a label explaining what happened was installed instead. AI shared CCTV footage of the attack on his Instagram account, which showed the man hanging around the piece before moving suddenly behind it and pushing it off its display stand so it smashed on the gallery floor. The man then held a broken fragment in a gesture of triumph, before the museum's security staff tackled him, pulling him onto the floor. Italian media reported the arrested man said he was an artist and was known for targeting important works of art in the past. It is still unclear how he got into Friday's event. <coughs> Lady Gaga struggling to let go of Joker character Lady Gaga has admitted she has struggled to let go of playing her version of the infamous comic book character Harley Quinn in the new Joker sequel. At the UK premiere of Joker, Foley Adu, she admitted, I don't really know if I did because I've made a whole record about her. As cinemagoers prepare to see the Oscar-winning actress star as the true love to Joaquin Phoenix's Joker, the Poker Face singer announced she's releasing a 13-song companion album to the film. I think the whole experience inspired me through and through. It was so amazing to get to know this character through music, through the script, through dance, through all this tremendous collaboration, Lady Gaga admitted. After 2019's Joker won two Oscars and made over $1 billion worldwide at the box office, filmmaker Todd Phillips and his leading man set out in reprising the troubled dual personality of Arthur Fleck slash Joker to take a different approach. While the character is institutionalized as he awaits trial, incorporating his fantasy life involved Phoenix mastering singing and tap dancing this time around. We asked each other for tips all the time. We were constantly like, what do you think of this? Back and forth, I loved working with Joaquin. There was never a dull day at the office. It was always super interesting, it was fun. As dark as the world of Joker is, we laughed a lot on set and we were always being as organic as possible, Gaga said about Phoenix having to sing live on set. While Phoenix did not stop for interviews on the red carpet, he has previously spoken of how he found Gaga to be just without ego, and with such a fierce determination to just get right in with us, she was just really game for anything. The movie premiered at the Venice Film Festival earlier this month to mixed reviews but soon we will find out who has the last laugh the Joker's cast or its critics. Joker, Foley Adu is out in UK cinemas on October 4th. Pop group OMG Girls awarded $71 million over dolls that copied their image. A toy company must pay $71 million for making dolls infringing the name and likeness of a U.S. teen pop group. OMG Girls sued MGA Entertainment over its LOL surprise. OMG Dolls, arguing the company had copied their look and brand. On Tuesday, the group finally won the long-running intellectual property case after a California jury agreed they had been ripped off. It awarded $17.9 million in real damages and $53.6 million in punitive damages, saying their trade dress and name, likeness and identity had been infringed. 
the payout goes to the group's three members Zanit Polins, Baja Rodriguez and Brahma Womack and to Polins' mother and stepfather, Tamika Tiny Harris's and Chris T.I. Harris. OMG Girls, who formed in 2009 and have 232,000 Instagram followers celebrated the win on social media. This is for creatives everywhere. No longer will we be bullied into silence when it comes to others profiting off of our ideas and creativity, Rodriguez wrote. The legal action began in 2020 when MGA disputed a cease and desist notice from the group. Counterclaims were filed and the first trial began in January 2023, but it was later declared a mistrial. The toy company won a second trial but OMG Girls successfully appealed and took it to a third court showdown. MGA Entertainment always strongly denied the claims. Its lawyer reportedly told the court during closing arguments the claim was baseless and offensive, arguing more than 40 million of the dolls had been sold without customer confusion. <laughs> Philip Schofield to make TV return with Story of Survival Philip Schofield has announced he will return to television 16 months after his departure from ITV's This Morning. The TV star will appear on a Channel 5 special called Cast Away. The three-part series will see the former presenter marooned on a tropical island off the coast of Madagascar. In a post on Instagram, he said, Now you know how I spent my summer. Alone for 10 days, no food, no water, no crew. My story of survival, both on a desert island and off it. The new series will air across three nights, from Monday until Wednesday. Schofield, 62, resigned from ITV last May after he admitted to an unwise but not illegal affair with a younger male colleague. He said at the time he had lost everything after admitting to the affair and that the fallout had had a catastrophic effect on his mind. Over the weekend, Channel 5 posted a short clip of an unidentified star walking across a remote beach as it teased its brand new Desert Island program on social media. After being revealed as the celebrity, Schofield said, This is most definitely a first for me and the only thing I felt compelled to do. It appealed to me on so many levels. I've recently had a lot of time to think about my life, what went right and what went wrong, but I've always had the safe arms of friends and family wrapped around me. This time it's just me. An external review found that ITV made considerable efforts to find out the truth about an alleged relationship between Schofield and a runner on this morning in 2019 but was unable to uncover the relevant evidence until the presenter's own admission. Carried out by Jane Mulcahy Casey, Schofield reluctantly declined to take part because of the risk to his health. Putin planning attacks that could lead to nuclear disaster. Russian President Vladimir Putin is planning attacks on Ukraine's nuclear power plants, Volodymyr Zelensky has said. Speaking at the UN General Assembly in New York, the Ukrainian president addressed Russia's 2022 attack on the nuclear facility in the city of Zaporizhia, which Moscow's forces now control. Describing initial reports of Russia's attack on that plant as one of the most horrifying moments of the war, he warned the world must pressure Moscow to prevent nuclear disaster. Recently, I received yet another alarming report from our intelligence now Putin does seem to be planning attacks on our nuclear power plants. Any missile or drone strike, any critical incident in the energy system could lead to a nuclear disaster. A day like that must never come, and Moscow needs to understand this, and this depends in part on your determination to put pressure on the aggressor, Mr. Zelensky said. Mr. Zelensky claimed Russia is getting detailed images and information on the infrastructure of Ukraine's nuclear plants with the help of satellites of other countries. If, God forbid, Russia causes a nuclear disaster at one of our nuclear power plants, radiation will not respect state borders, he added. 
Russia has already targeted large parts of Ukraine's energy infrastructure, Mr. Zelensky said, with all thermal power plants destroyed as well as a large part of its hydroelectric capacity. Mr. Putin is trying to keep millions of Ukrainians in the cold and dark this winter, the Ukrainian leader warned. Since Russia can't defeat our people's resistance on the battlefield, Putin is looking for other ways to break the Ukrainian spirit, he added. Mr. Zelensky urged leaders at the UN to stand with his country and pursue real, just peace. The Ukrainian president is expected to present a victory plan to the White House two and a half years after Russia's full-scale invasion. Recent weeks have seen Mr. Zelensky pushing the US and other Western allies for permission to use longer-range missiles to strike deeper into Russia. World's Oldest Cheese Found on Chinese Mummy The world's oldest piece of cheese has been discovered found laid across a mummy's neck. A 3,600-year-old coffin was opened in the Xiaohe Cemetery in Xinjiang, China, during an excavation in 2003, where a substance was draped across the neck of a mummified young woman. Despite seeming like a piece of jewelry at the time, scientists have now said they have identified the sample as the oldest piece of cheese in the world. Xiao Mei Fu, a paleogeneticist at the Chinese Academy of Sciences in Beijing, told, regular cheese is soft. This is not. It has now become really dry, dense, and hard dust. She explained that when the woman's coffin was exhumed, it was found to be well-preserved because of the Darin Basin Desert's dry climate. While the production of cheese has been long depicted in history, the researchers wrote in a study published in the journal Cell that the history of fermented dairy is largely lost in antiquity. Ms. Fu said that she and her team took samples from three tombs in the Xiaohe Cemetery and processed the DNA to trace the evolution of the bacteria across thousands of years. The samples were then identified as kefir cheese, made by fermenting milk using kefir grains, and there was also evidence of goat and cow's milk being used. In their research, the team said the use of kefir cheese shows how Bronze Age populations interacted and how the Xiaohe people, who were known to be genetically lactose intolerant, consumed dairy before the era of pasteurization and refrigeration. They wrote, these 3,500-year-old kefir cheese samples are among the few dairy remains preserved more than 3,000 years and were produced by the Bronze Age Xiaohe population, a population that possesses mixed lifestyles and techniques.